Hi everyone, this is Nurse Anna from NurseStudy.net and today we're going to be talking about pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema, also known as pulmonary congestion, is a lung condition that involves accumulation of fluids in the lungs. Difficulty with breathing is one of the classic signs of pulmonary edema. Acute pulmonary edema is considered a medical emergency and can be fatal, but can also respond to treatment quickly if it is diagnosed early. In acute pulmonary edema, you may see some of the following signs and symptoms. Hypoxia, dyspnea, cold clammy skin, wheeze, gasping for breath, productive cough that may also be blood tinged, tachycardia, cyanosis, and anxiety. In chronic pulmonary edema, in addition to the acute signs and symptoms that we just listed, you may also see rapid weight gain, fatigue, edema, the lower extremities, and difficulty walking uphill. There are two types of pulmonary edema in terms of causation, cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic. Cardiogenic means arising in the heart or caused by a heart condition. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at the causes of pulmonary edema. First, we're going to tackle cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So the most common cause of pulmonary edema here is heart disease, such as acute myocardial infarction, otherwise known as MI, or heart attack, a, a congestive heart failure, which is also CHF, coronary artery disease, which we also say CAD, cardiomyopathy, heart valve problems, and hypertension, which enlarges the heart. Cardiogenic pulmonary edema occurs when the heart is unable to pump out the normal blood volume from the lungs due to a dysfunction in the left ventricle. This puts more pressure to the left atrium of the heart. When there is an increased left atrial pressure, the hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries of the lungs are elevated. The fluid is then pushed into the pulmonary air sacs, which results in difficulty breathing. In non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, if there is no left ventricular dysfunction despite the fluid accumulation in the lungs, the pulmonary edema might be non-cardiogenic, or in other words, not be caused by any problems with the heart. This may result from acute respiratory distress syndrome, otherwise known as ARDS, pneumonia, sepsis, viral infection, such as the HIV virus or dengue virus, brain injury, fluid overload, acute asthma, thromboembolism, lung surgery, trauma, or drug use. Non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema may also be due to smoke inhalation, near drowning, high altitude, physical exertion such as exercise, swimming, and diving. Next, we're going to talk about some complications of pulmonary edema. Edema of the abdominal cavity and lower extremities. If left untreated, pulmonary edema can further increase the pulmonary arterial pressure. This condition is called pulmonary hypertension. Next would be pleural effusion. The increased pressure in the pulmonary circulation may lead to accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity, which surrounds the lung. And finally, liver congestion and swelling. There can be an increased pressure in the hepatic portal system, causing the liver to be congested and swollen thereby unable to detoxify the blood as normal. For diagnostic tests, you may see the following ordered. A pulse oximetry to measure the oxygen level in the blood, chest x-ray, blood tests including arterial blood gas analysis, full blood count, biochemistry, and maybe even thyroid function, an EKG, cardiac catheterization, and coronary angiogram. Okay, so let's move on for, to treatments for pulmonary edema. The first one's going to be oxygen therapy. The priority here is to give oxygen to reverse the hypoxia or the deprivation of oxygen supply in the body. Severe hypoxia may require the use of mechanical ventilation to provide a positive airway pressure. Next, we'll discuss diuretics as a treatment to decrease the fluid that has accumulated in the heart and lungs. Diuretics such as Lasix are usually administered. Then we can move on to antihypertensives. Hypertension may eventually lead to pulmonary edema. Blood 
Pressure medications include beta blockers and ACE inhibitors. Medications such as nitroglycerin may be used to decrease the pressure going to the heart. Anti-cholesterol drugs for cardiogenic pulmonary edema, anti-cholesterol drugs might be prescribed to reduce the LDL or, in other words, the bad cholesterol that clog up the cardiac arteries. And finally, another treatment that be ordered by the provider are antivirals or antibiotics. Bacteria and viruses are common underlying causes of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So next we can discuss some nursing care plans for pulmonary edema. The first di nursing diagnosis would be impaired gas exchange related to pulmonary edema as evidenced by shortness of breath, an O2 level of 85%, productive cough, and frothy phlegm. Our desired outcome would be the patient will maintain optimal gas exchange as evidenced by respiratory rates between 12 and 20 breaths per minute, oxygen saturation of 96 or above on room air, 88 to 92% if the patient has COPD, and verbalize ease of breathing. The intervention would be assess the vital signs, especially the oxygen saturation characteristics of respirations at least every four hours. Also monitor the results of the ABG analysis. The rationale for that? To assist in creating an accurate diagnosis and monitor effectiveness of medical treatment. ABG analysis to check and see if there's an increase in PaCO2 and a decrease in PaO2 which are the signs of hypoxemia and respiratory acidosis. Another intervention would be to administer supplemental oxygen as prescribed. Discontinue if O2 levels above the target range or is ordered by the physician or caregiver. And the rationale for that is to increase the oxygen level to achieve a PaO2 value within the target range. Another positive nursing diagnosis could be ineffective breathing pattern related to pulmonary edema as evidenced by shortness of breath, PaO2 level of 85%, productive cough, and blood-tinged frothy phlegm. So this concludes our presentation of pulmonary edema. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And please don't forget to go to nursestudy.net. We have more care plans. Just click on the pulmonary edema article and you'll see more care plans with interventions and rationale. This is Nurse Anna signing off. See you soon.